Hello.
Hello? Spriti? Uh, sir, uh, ma'am will again re-login now. Give her one. Smriti ma'am will re-login. Uh, Smriti ma'am will re-login now, sir. Just give me a minute. Hi, Smriti. I can see you now. I think I'm finally on. Am I, I on? Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, finally. Perfect. Okay. Finally. So, uh, very good evening. And um, we have a great audience already here. And uh, I can see some 150 participants who are already online. I can see a few schools. But welcome to all of you for the first online workshop of the Young Entrepreneur of the Year Challenge. So just to, just to set the pace of the evening, I would not take much of your time because we already have uh, our guest speaker here with us. But uh, as we embark on this journey, on this remarkable journey together, why are we here? I'll, I'll just give you a glimpse so that all of us understand what are the takeaways. I hope all of you have your notepads, your pens around you or you're noting them down, taking the notes in on your phones, on, on your notepads or anything that you like to, right? So starting from this, I am thrilled to have all of you here representing a diverse and dynamic community of dreamers, innovators and change makers. Uh, why so? Because being an entrepreneur is all about all these three things also. Today, we embark on a remarkable journey together, one that will inspire, empower and equip you all with tools and insights needed to transform your aspirations into tangible achievements. Our mission is to unlock the potential within each one of you, encouraging a spirit of creativity, resilience and collaboration. Throughout this event, we have an incredible lineup of speakers starting from today onwards who are trailblazers in their respective fields. These visionary individuals have brought their own ideas to life, overcoming challenges and leaving a lasting impact on their communities. They are here to share their wisdom, experiences and invaluable advice to guide you on your own path to success and discovery. From the first presentation today, where we are starting to the lineup that we will be having, you will be having a curated and a comprehensive program to cater to your thirst for knowledge and provide a platform for meaningful connections. It's not just a competition, it's also a platform to connect with like-minded people sitting all across the country, right? So you won't believe we are close to 1,000 students who are participating in this challenge. So remember, this event is not just about listening and learning. It's about taking action, right? So today is the first workshop. Your deadlines are coming close where you'll be have to submitting your prototype. That's the first thing that uh, we are approaching towards. But we'll talk about this later on. But just don't just just remember that there's a lot to do, right? So we encourage you to actively participate, ask questions, share your insights and connect with like minded individuals who can become valuable allies in your journey. So without further ado, let's let's dive into this transformative experience together. 
brace yourself for an immersive, thought-provoking and inspiring event that will leave you with tools, motivation and network needed to turn your ideas into reality. The time is now and the world is waiting for your brilliance to shine. I am Smriti Singh Bhati from Vijay Bhumi University and I welcome Ashutosh Fatak, who is the founder of True School of Music and the Pro Vice Chancellor at Vijay Bhumi University. Welcome Ashutosh, welcome to the platform and hope we have a really wonderful interactive workshop with all these young minds here. So over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Smriti. Hello, everybody. Good evening. It's, I'm so happy to see so many of you here. It's going to be uh, it's going to be so much fun, you know. It's my God, we got about about 175 people, so this is great. I love that fact that so many of you have come and you have this. Uh, see, you got that spark. You basically you got this some kind of a drive. There's something inside you that makes you want to come here and do this. That means you have what it takes to be successful at what you ever want. Make your dreams come true, and I promise you that. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. And then I want to tell you about what I think, how we can maybe think about business and business plans and, and how you should approach it. Yeah, that sounds good. And you know what I want to do is try and make this interactive. So uh, I've asked Smriti to just keep a track of any questions that come in. Usually I do this live. I do it in front of people and I love interacting with everyone and get their feedback. I know that in Zoom, uh, we're going to try and do that as much as possible as, as we can. So I hope you guys have your questions ready because that's what makes it all fun. And then maybe, uh, Smriti, I'll stop every once in a while and ask you maybe to read out some questions and we can do that, right? Okay, first of all, my name is Ashutosh Fatak. I'm a composer and a producer. I've been making music for the last uh, 30 odd years. years. I've been doing music for commercials and movies and things like that. But I started off, I started off, uh, when I, when I went to college, uh, I was programmed to want to go to business because at that point in time, everyone said, okay, you got to go and make money. So um, I tried, I worked very hard and I got into the Wharton Business School to do um, my economics degree. But I also love to make music. So what I did was I also did a music degree. So I did both. I did a music Western classical theory degree and an economics degree. And my life basically has been about creating businesses out of music. And so that's how I've joined my dots. And I'm hoping that somehow you guys will find the dots that you will join in the passions that you have and create something phenomenal. Uh, so when I started first, I started composing music for commercials. Then I started um, a music production company because when I when the work got too much, we needed to get a lot more composers on board. So we became a bigger team. And from that, there evolved another company, which I started called the Blue Frog, which was a live music venues. It was all over the, uh, the country. There were three, four Blue Frogs around the country. We had recording studios and we had a record label and all kinds of music-based businesses. We started from there. So I have a little bit of experience in starting a bunch of other businesses and the the uh, latest one was the True School of Music, which actually is 10 years ago. So True School, in fact, is turning 10 this year. So it's I'm uh, I'm a veteran of startups, let me put it that way. We have done it many times. And I've, and I've made uh, many mistakes and there are many successes that have also come that way. So I think from, from based on my experience and based on what, I, what I've understood, I'd like to share some ideas with you on how you guys should think about doing this business. I love the fact, first of all, that there's so many of you that are going to be participating in this. Uh, I think it's um, the future is decided by the youth and you guys actually are the key. The world is going to be very different when you guys graduate or whenever you finish school or college because the, the world as it exists Will, that will exist in four years does not exist right now. Remember that. So that means the ideas that you're going to have to come up with have to come. You have to think about the future and think about how how you can solve problems in the future. So I want to take you through some some ways of looking at it. Right. So one sec. I'm just going to try and project this thing. Hang on. One second.
Priti, can you guys see this? Right. Okay. So let's talk about this. And and maybe Smriti, when I start going through this, I'm going to take you guys through two, two, three, two, two parts. One part is the idea itself. Okay. Where you're going to get how you how you're going to think about the idea. So what is the idea? First of all, how many of you already have an idea? Can you guys raise your hands? Yeah, Let's let's, let's yeah, let's oh wow, let's let's see the raise of hands. Yes. Kishir, Ananya, Harsham, Kratin, Vedant, Ansh, okay, Gurnoor. Oh, there are a lot of kids who have ideas. They just uh, Anushka, Navreet, Tanishi, Jia, right, so Arya. Number going. Look at that. 44, 45, 46, wow. 47. So many, so many good possibilities there. Okay, Bhavish. great. So good. So let's 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 start with this. Okay. So you guys have already thought about this thing. That's very great. Now, what I want to do is try and define what that idea is. So I want you to think about a few more things. Okay. And I want you guys to react to this also. So let's start off with the first thing. How many of you know you yourselves? I want you to first think about that. Because one of the best, best things that you could ever do is bring yourself into the idea. Because you know what? All, each and every one of you are unique. Okay, each and every one of you have come from different backgrounds. Each and every one of you have had different bring upbringings. Each and every one of you had different toys you played with when you were kids. Each and every one of you have different relationships. That is something that is very, very valuable. So I need you guys to think about you. What is unique about yourself and what is your USP? So your idea in some sense should definitely resonate with something that is about you. Understand that? Does everyone get that? You can put all your hands down now. And I want to make sure you get that. That is very, very important. That means what are you passionate about? You know, what do you think? Because, you know, when you start a business, let me tell you, it's probably one of the toughest things in the world to do. And to keep going at it, you need perseverance. And to keep to have the perseverance, you really need to have the drive. And the closer that idea is related to you as a person, as a personality, that drive will happen naturally. So that is one of the hardest things. You know, everyone talks about, oh, startups, startups, startups. 98% of startups fail. So remember that. So that means it's a tough one. So you got to really love what you're doing, okay? So you have to think about that. All right. What else? You need to think about what you are passionate about. So what is the first thing? What is unique about you? Second thing, what are you passionate about? There is a, there was a saying, uh, but I read this somewhere. I think it was Peter Thiel or someone who, who said this. Um, um, starting a business is like jumping off a cliff and while you're falling down, building a whole airplane before you hit the ground and, come and flying off from it. That's how difficult it is. So, so if you really want to do it, you're going to have to be able to jump off that cliff and build that plane. So you, the passion that you have has to drive you completely because you know what, when it gets tough, when it gets hard, yeah, yeah, it's very easy to say no. But if you truly believe in your idea, so the idea, remember, has to resonate with a passion that you have. And there's no, no two ways about this. So think about that very clearly, because if you think about it, when you're doing a, a real business, a long-term business, this is not something you want to just start up and, and, and take off. First of all, that also is a terrible idea. A lot of people think that, okay, let me just start up something, yeah, yeah, I'll get some valuation and I'll sell it. Bad idea. Because that way, your basic, your fundamental idea would be very, very weak. You won't be able to do that. You should start a company that honestly, that you want to be that you want to have for the rest of your life. That is where that passion has to come from. And those are the ones that succeed because that's where that founder is so critical. The founder has thought about everything. They thought about all the permutation, combination things that can go wrong, thought about all the competition. So if you have to do all that thinking, you better love what you're doing. So you really better love it. So find, find an area that you're really, really passionate about. Okay, and then, in that area, 
You start to look at what are the problems. Simple as that. What are the problems facing there? What are the, if, if you're, if you, if you are passionate about sport, for example, or if it's passionate about music, if you're passionate about sport, and if you're thinking about what to do, uh, and if you like cricket, okay, now if they find a problem there, maybe there's a problem that there's an access to talented people that are making the Indian team. Maybe there's another way to solve that problem. Maybe that, that, that is not happening. And you know, everyone in India loves to play cricket. Maybe there's a solution over there. So you need to find something that you're passionate about, something that you will bring as a unique uh, experience into that situation, and then find that problem in that area. Okay, simple. One, two, three step. Think about that. You must answer these questions with your business. Now, those problems, problems, the problem or that problem that you are solving, but the time to now step back. Is it a small problem? Is it a problem that needs to be solved right now? Or is it a problem that can be solved later? Is it something that people can't do without? Or they can, it's just a convenience if they don't have. All these makes, all these put makes it all these way of really understanding the value of what you're bringing to the table right now so that perspective have an outsider's perspective i'm talking about you have to be passionate about it from the inside but you got to be clear about it from the outside that means you need to be objectively understanding that that your pro the problem that you think that exists is a real problem and it's a big problem and you're going to solve that problem because the best businesses are ones that solve the big problems, as everyone knows. So be honest about this. Is that struggle real? So all the ideas that you guys have had so far, I want you to go back and think about these steps about that. Okay. Is it a real, real problem? How many people are facing that problem? Is it, is it big enough? Is the market then big enough for you to have this whole idea and get investment into? All right. Switi, have there any questions coming up? You let me know. Absolutely. Okay. I will. Uh, Ashtosh, we, I think uh, there's a little trouble so, in the connectivity there. Let's focus on the one idea that. Sorry, was that, was that uh, off the word? Yeah, the bandwidth, the bandwidth of your connection is a little weak, I think. Uh, mm. Let me let me just Pradeep. Is it is it a trouble? Uh, can everyone hear so properly? Hear. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, some people are facing. Yeah. It's it's a little feeble that side. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank is you it, so it, much. Is it for everyone? Is it my side? Yeah. That's that's your side, Ashtosh. Yeah. Little fuel. Oh boy. Okay, let's 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 carry on. If if there'll be more trouble, then uh, we'll try to figure it out. Okay, okay. Let me know. Is it uh, so, so? So so Smithy, just keep telling me. Tell me when it's breaking up and when it's not. Is it okay right I, now? Yeah, it's good. It's good now. Okay, so. So do I need to repeat anything then? Yeah, the, the last slide, the last slide. Yeah, we, we missed on that. Yes. Yeah. So so you know what? Let me just let me just quickly recap. Okay. A very simple thing. Find out what is unique about you. I'm talking about you guys, each founder as a as and I want you to write that down. I want you to think about what are you bringing to, to the table as as your own experience and your own perspective. What is your USP? Remember that. So that's quickly one. Second, what is the area that you personally are totally passionate about? And that is important because this is going to be a difficult journey, right? Because business is hard and perseverance requires passion. So remember that. What do you love? And then in that area of what you love, what are the problems that you, that you think you're going to solve? So it's very clear. And then is it a real problem or not? The, the, the real 
the truth. You got to think about that practically, whether this actually is as big a problem as it seems or not. So step back. This is when you step back and think about that. Yeah. Okay. Now, so this is, if you got that idea, now let's fine tune that idea, right? So you need, you need an idea that has a sizable customer base. First of all, it has to be something that is worth putting the investment into. It's worth getting revenues, uh, decent enough revenues for investors to think, okay, fine, this is something that I think has got a lot of potential. So that means the size of your customer base is very important. Okay. Who is your customer? You need to start thinking about that very clearly. Obviously, you should know that you have an idea what kind of what kind of uh, demographics are you i will get into that in a little bit but you have to just get a get a sense of what they stand for you know and how do you deliver value at an appropriate cost is a very basic thing it has to be something a customer can afford and it's got value that they need okay and what is it about you going back to that and your unique abilities that put you in a position to find the best solution so why are you better than someone else to do this problem, to solve this problem? You need to put that down. So you need to convince me if I'm an investor that you're the best bet in solving this problem. And then again, like I said, consider the timing of your solution. Is this something that people really need right now? Is it really important? Is it really urgent? Is it something that's going to make their lives better immediately? Or is it something that they still have to learn about to even understand whether they... They, 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 there's value to it. There's, there are many products that are like that also. So that means there's a whole learning curve. That means you have to educate people about how good this product is for you or this service is for you because it's something so new. Now, if that is new, you got to think about the that learning curve. It's going to take a long time before someone can actually understand the value of your product or service. Think about that. This, these are very real, real things that everyone has to answer. Because if you're coming in too early with a solution where people don't really know that this is a good solution, then that doesn't, there's no point doing it. Even though it may be a fantastic idea, but if people are not going to be able to understand that this idea is actually a value to me, then your effort is going to go to waste. Then you're going to spend a lot more time in the education process of teaching people of get the learning curve is going to be very high. So you need to figure that out. So make sure your idea is solving a problem right now. If it's not solving a problem right now, but you think that if with through education and that's part of your plan, that you educating the public about how this adds value to their lives, but once they get it, it can be really huge. You can look at that as an idea too. But you have to consider this. So don't expect that success to happen immediately if the if the customer does not know that does not understand the value of your product. Right. So that is one main thing you need to focus on also. Let's go next. <clears throat> so if you guys have got a sense of this, I would say this is your germ. This is the beginning of how you want to, how you need to do this. Now, if we were slightly more interactive with the situation, I'd be, I'd be getting your ideas and I'd be trying to say, okay, how to do, how to, uh, the Smithy, this is a great time for us to, for us to do a little interaction. You know, yes. and, I can, and I can take them through what I think. And I like to have maybe some specific, if there anyone specifically wants to talk about their one idea, one thought, we can maybe talk, talk about these concepts with that. Is there anyone there right now who wants to do that? Yeah, I, I, I would be very happy to take uh, questions on this. Just talked about like, uh, you know, how, how we're going to like the five steps from the idea to the walk itself. So I can see Chaitanya, Ananya, Angel, who have uh, raised their hands. So let's, let's uh, do are you able to, yeah, you're saying five minutes of that. Yeah, let's do five yes. minutes of interactions, yeah? Yes. So Can so you Shri unmute is... yourself, Ananya? I, I would request the tech team to allow Ananya to please unmute herself so that we can take, uh, uh, we can just talk to her. And in the meanwhile, Ananya, is it done? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Good evening, okay, go everyone. Ahead. Hi, Ananya. How are you doing? I'm fine, sir. How are you? Very good. I like the I like the bold ones who like to first talk, talk first, because that means you are ready for, you're a strong leader. All right. 
Tell me. Yes. Uh, so my idea was to help kids and people who have difficulty in learning subjects like English and maths because I am uh, good in English. And my best friend uh, who's helping me out with maths. So we wanted to help people out by letting them know that the world is not bad. There are people who can help you. And the game, we are, the, in the app, we are planning to put up games so that uh, the so like people a, this is like a So this is like a tutorial app? Is it? Is it? Is, no, is sir, it it's not a tutorial app. Uh, so it's uh, it's more like you play a game to learn more. Okay. So it's it's fun, but at the same time, it's educating you. Okay. So let 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 let's ask, let's ask, let me ask these questions. Let's run you through this. So what is your USP that you're bringing to this to this business? You yourself personally. So uh, I have. A very very close friend of mine who is um, autistic and she has a hard time learning a lot of subjects especially maths okay. and English uh, because okay. I'm from Kerala so mm -hmm. uh, in Kerala many kids are unable to uh, you know learn from schools because of their special abilities like autis autism and yeah. And I find it very heartbreaking for that friend of mine. Her name is Smriti. Sorry, Smriti, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> she loves studying, but then she can't really understand most of the things and she okay. needs so, help. So what, so what do you do? What is it that, Abasi, I, do you understand? Because you understand what she goes through, you, are, you, you know how to help her? Is that what it is? Yes, sir. And I want to help more people like that because I know there are many people who struggle like her every day. Uh, and and what, what? Why do you do that? Why do you want to help? Her? Sir, I've uh, noticed many many things. Uh, the maid that comes to my house, her daughter is not educated, and she when she sees me attending my online classes nowadays because of the floods in Punjab. She she asks me, how does it feel to study? And I say, it's amazing. And she told me that she wished that her daughter could study. But because she could not, you know, um, afford it, she couldn't send her daughter to school. And her daughter just recently got married and has a child now. And the entire family is struggling. And the child is also specially able with autism. And the mother, like my maid's daughter, has a phone. So okay, so you're you're saying okay. So let me let me let me let me understand. So you're saying that this is from your heart. You feel instinctively this is your your you want to do this. This is something that makes you happy to do, right? To help, yes. help someone like this. So 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 that means whether you are getting paid for it or not, you still want to do it, correct? This is what. Yes, sir. I do is. not want any money. I, no, no, so no, no, if you start a business, you have to figure out how to earn money, but that's, it's not a bad thing to want money. But what I'm saying is that it's good because then what you're telling me is that you got a passion for this, right? You got a passion for education and you got a for specific uh, people with autism and things like that. You have a you have a, and you think you have a solution to 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 help them, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So that is your basic idea. You, I'm not going to go into details, but the idea is that, right? So if yes. you if you go forward, I think this answers your question. You think you are, I believe you are very passionate about it. And that means no matter how hard it is, you will find a solution to it, right? So that's good. You got that thing going, okay? Now... Uh, Ashutosh, I, I have one thing because you're talking about this. Can you, can, there's a question in the box related to this, yeah. which is... Uh, asked by a child and the question is what is a usp uh you know what is a usp so, okay okay sorry yeah, so yeah. so so your usp is basically your your unique selling proposition what is making you so unique what are you bringing to the table right as a person so that means what is what is it that is unique about you that is that is not there about someone else so why what differentiates why should i go with you over someone else 
for example. Now, in this situation, Ananya, I would say that maybe your unique uh, is uniqueness is that you have, through experience, you have found a method of of of, of helping people with autism, for example, right? Maybe, and you've seen that happen, and you've seen the result of that, and you yourself has done that. So that means that experience is a real personal experience, for example, you know? So if that is the case, you can build on that, and you can build on that. So that was a small idea, we can build on that whole, how to, how to, how to help people with autism idea, yeah. So, so you got that. I know you're passionate about it. Um, you have identified the problem, so that's good, okay? That's good. You identified what that problem is now. Now that question is how big is of a problem is it, right? Now here's now here's what now here's a challenge, Ananya. Okay, I'm not talking about how big a problem is in terms of how important that problem is. Okay, that's very different because that problem may be very very important and it is. If we are talking in terms of a business, remember that. If we're talking in terms of a business. You have to then say that okay, there are this problem is really big because the actual number of people with autism is actually so big, and we have a market there. So, and you need to think from that point of view. So, if you what you need to do is do that research to find out how many people, where, and how to reach them, and how and how your solution is going to help that many people. So now, as a remember this, we're looking at um, it. It sounds. It doesn't sound that great when you think of it from a pure money business point of view, but the reality is that you need to have a viable business for it to be continuing. It can't just be a charity. You know what I mean? So idea, and you have a good idea. So you must think about these things about how big this problem really is. And I'm pro I'm pretty sure in your case the answer is it's pretty big. You know, because yes. I think there are many people who have these issues, but they don't even realize they have it. Or they don't even know, they're not diagnosed with it. So maybe there is a, there again is a problem. Like I was saying in that earlier part, you know, is this something that people know that they have it? So is this is there's an education, educating the audience aspect involved in this, correct? For you, right? So that gives you a perspective of, of what your how your thought is. Is that does that help you at all to put that into perspective, Adanya? Yes, sir, it does. Okay, great. So great. So can we take one more, one more uh, yeah, child's yeah. Uh, idea and bring it to the context, like focusing and yeah. Sure, let's do that. Let's do that. Who else is there? Who else wants to chat? So, so there was Priyanshu, Chaitanya. Uh, I saw Samriddhi. There's Arpandi, Niyati, Arav. So Arav seems all set. Uh, I can, I can. Uh, uh, Arav, would you like to speak? Sure. Uh, can we please unmute him? Arav? Yeah. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. Uh, Pradeep, can you please uh, help in uh, Arav unmuting his mic? Arav Mali, right? Arav, where are you from? I mean, just, just give us a minute down. Is it yeah, good? Arav. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I am from the Lights International School from Indore, and uh, uh, good morning, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. How how is it? I'm in your town right now. <laughs> oh, sir, great news, sir. Great news, sir. <laughs> yeah, sir. Uh, how are you, sir? Fine, everything. Very good, very good. Very happy to be here. I'm so happy to talk to all of you. <laughs> yeah, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so our idea is basically a lot of people face back problems, you know, their daily life. Uh, there's a lot of back problems due to the heavy bags, mostly students, but also office workers also face the heavy back, uh, back problems and posture problems and a lot of other problems are generated not solely due to heavy bags, but uh, the it is a main cause, you know, heavy bags really uh, mess up your posture so our bag uh, our acubag it's a company uh, so our acubag focus it's a uh, acupressure backpack so it has acupressure points on the back of the uh, backpack and on the shoulders so, as well so, so these provide relief so, so uh, before you get deeper into your product i'd like to go through these questions with you Some yeah yes yeah, so so what, what is your what is unique about you so, so me, uh, well, sir, I do martial arts. I have done MUNs. I have done quizzes. 
I have a variety of experiences. I was, I'm also interested so in the stock market. What do you think about you in respect to your product? What are you bringing to the table? In? Sir, uh, so unique about me is the concern I have for the health of others, uh, you know, especially family and loved ones, but also the whole general population. And, you know, health is uh, a very important topic for me and uh, our f product focuses on health in daily life, which, you know, integrates health into daily life as well. And, you know, you can uh, get health benefits effortlessly without any different thing, you know, just okay. normal backpacks, so wearing that backpack. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little deeper with you on this, okay? Okay, sir. Okay, okay sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay. Yours. Okay. This is. I'm with you. I love what you're doing. Okay. So now take take what I'm saying in the correct spirit. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Definitely. Okay. Sir. Okay. So I'm gonna be that little harsh guy and say, okay, fine, but I've heard this from everyone. Okay. I've heard this many times. Why? Yeah. What is it that? Why should I go with you? I've heard this from many other people. So, why so me as in, this? why do I think you will succeed in this? So, so our, our team has four people, me, Precious, Thug and Rishvi, uh, they are present in the meeting. Yes. So I focus on the technicalities and, uh, Yug is our uh, head as, uh, he's in 12th grade. Rishvi focuses on marketing and Precious is uh, mostly operations. So, so again, I'm going to stop you there, Arab. Arab, I'm going to stop you there. Everyone will have someone who does something for the company. What I'm getting at, what I'm getting at is where you need to do a little bit of introspection is, the, is why you, right now you're explaining positions to me. You're explaining oh, tasks yeah, yeah. and what people do. You, you, mm. you, there's a slight difference. You, I hope you understand that. I want you to think yeah, about yeah. this because I'm sure there is a very good reason. And that reason why you will make a very big difference if I'm choosing you between someone else if they're similar products. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, also, because there's a little bit of introspection that you all need to do to really understand why am I doing this? Like, why is it, why am I go, going to succeed in doing this? Is it because I have some special knowledge that no one else has? Is it because I've got some experience that no one else has? Is it because the research I've done that no one else has? Is it because I've connected the dots between different, different things that no one else has? You know, maybe you, maybe your passions are about, okay, your it's about health but it's also about ergonomics and it's also about something else and is a reason why these your these that the only you are the good the best your you and your team are the best solution because there's no one else has thought about it like that and you approached it completely in a different way you understand what i'm saying right yes so yes this is going to be very very important for you to think about while explaining and i think all of you should think about this because it'll make you it'll make you stand out from everyone else so remember that it's very it's very easy to get caught up in your product itself. You know what I mean? And 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 thinking that oh okay, because I've got a product idea. I think my I think that because the execution of that product idea Arab, is going to be determined by that unique personalities that execute it. That's basically what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So, Ashley, I have a very uh, interesting question on that note. Someone has yeah. asked that. Should the idea be sustainable? Should the business model be uh, necessarily on the basis of sustainability? What What would you like to say on this? No, do you mean sustainable meaning as a sustainable? Okay, the, 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 I, I, when we refer to sustainable business plans, meaning a, a, pla a business that is sustainable, that means the business will continue to exist. That's one thing. And the other thing is you're talking about sustainability. What are you referring to in this? So they're talking about sustainability. Yeah, of course. I mean, see, if you're talking about sustainability, I mean, should the idea be about sustainability? Of course, it should be about it, if it can be. But I'm saying, what are you bringing to that table in, in sustainability? How are you different from someone else? Is what you guys need to start thinking about. Because that will differentiate, that will, it'll affect the way you do your business, it'll affect how your product is perceived, it'll affect a lot of things, you know? And it'll affect how you reach, the, reach your audiences too. Because... Going back to this, Arav, you're obviously looking like uh, you're passionate about about this, about this, mm -hmm. about this idea, right? Now, yeah. when it's about to fail, when everyone is saying, boss, is gone, don't do it. When it's down to that level, when you're standing in the abyss, there's only a black hole in front of you. Are you still going to continue mm -hmm. doing it and, and find a pivot and find a way to do it? You know, that's how, yes. that's how intense that idea 
needs to be. So there's this, yes. this, otherwise it won't work, right? So good. So you look at that. Yeah, so definitely, so thank you, sir. And you're looking at how many people, I, mean, every, I, I think for sure, everyone is facing a back problem, everyone is facing, everyone carries a bag. So I think I think you do have a, you do have a good market fit over here, you know? And is this struggle mm -hmm. real? And if you do have that, yeah, so, so it's good. So think about it like this. And I think I think you will you will go. So all I'm getting at, guys, at this stage, to get your conviction in your plan, to get your conviction, you also have to bring yourselves into it. Okay, you have to you have to be you have to be honest about that. Because sometimes it's really it's really uh, it's, it's really fun to get excited about a concept which is just a concept, and then when it actually comes down to executing that concept, like oh man. This is like really hard. Yeah, it's not worth it. You know, it can't go down that level. So you have to analyze that right now. Whether okay, this no matter what happens, I can't sleep until this thing is done. You know, that's yeah, that's the attitude you for this business to survive. Or to, or to yeah, sir. Sir. To funding. Yeah, so so yeah. we definitely have that attitude, sir. You know, it's it's a daily personal issue for me as well. You know, our teachers also face back problems regularly and uh, I am a person who like really loves the teacher and would do anything for them. Like, uh, you know, go, yeah. I remember it, but uh, teacher above all and family above all. I'm that kind of guy. So yes, sir, I'm, uh, I'm not stopping okay, I, here. I, 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 yeah. love, I love, I, I think it's a very good thing. I think it's a very good thing. If you can, one second, let me just see. I'll be told if you can't hear, put on, hang on. Let me see if this is, this is better. Give me one sec, guys. I'm just reading. I'm putting my airports on. I got it. Can you hear me? Can yeah, see? it's yes, better yes, now. Sir, it's yes. better now, Shush. It's far it's, better. It's better now? Yes. Okay, okay. Perfect. Okay, okay. All right. So, wait, what does this say? Uh, anyway, I got distracted. Anyway. So, yeah, so, I don't, good. But I'm just saying that it, it you need to... Yeah, Arya really, was talking uh, about his uh, love for his teachers and family, Ashutosh. We were, we were talking yeah, about Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. So what I'm saying is that I really like the fact that it's personal. Because you know what, I'm of the opinion that it should be personal. Because when it's personal, this is my opinion, okay? And yes. other people may have a different way of doing it. But if you're personal, that means you're, you're in it because you're passionate about it and it makes a difference to you. And I think that when you bring that to the table, you see conviction. You know that if I'm your, if I'm an investor looking at you guys, and I see that it's a personal thing, and I see that you're passionate about it, and I see that you're clear-headed about it, and you see you have a path, and I see that you have a unique selling proposition about yourself within the situation, I say like, yes, this is the founder that I want to try and support. So it has to be about that. You know, a lot of it is, hey, I want to start us do a startup. Let's think of an idea. Most of those ideas never work. Let me be honest with you. The ideas that actually work is the one that, oh God, I have an idea. Okay, let's do a startup. I have an idea, let me form a company. So it should be, in my opinion, coming from that point of view. That means the idea is before the idea of having a startup, if you know what I mean. Yes, so sir, yes. keep, I think, keep it personal, keep it passionate, and you, you guys will be good. All right. Yeah. One last you, question, so Ashutosh, okay, which is so very far? interesting. One yeah. last question up to this topic, and then we'll continue. Yeah. Can we take it, or yeah. uh, are we running short of time? Yeah, take it, take it, take it, take it. No, no, I'm happy. So Please Ananya Nair has uh, a very, very uh, good question. She's asked that from a general general perspective, how would the disadvantages of joining a niche industry compared? Uh, compared to joining an oversaturated one would you would, do you want me to repeat this so she she's asking from a general perspective how would the disadvantages of joining a niche industry compare to joining an oversaturated one like i well, can I i'm can... not sure i why no no so why why is it disadvantage? Is why is in your opinion? So Ananya, can we can we talk about this? Uh, why is it? Why do you see it as a disadvantage to join a niche industry? 
Yeah, she she is asking this question, uh, Ashutosh. I think you you should uh, you are the right example. You you came into the niche industry which was not overcrowded at all. So, like vis a vis, can you can you just yeah? She wants no, to so, ask. This so I I'll tell you something. So there are yeah, okay. So there are, so personally, what I like what I've done in my businesses is that I like to enter. I do like to. and enter a space where it's it's a risky thing to do by the way to enter a space that no one's ever been there before so when we did um, when i started uh, blue frog it was no one had ever done something like that before it was a massive live music venue uh, where the first time people this is the long time ago this is the first time people were told to pay for a for a band like you have to pay at the gate just for the band and it's not for food or alcohol you have to pay only for the band so but it these frontier businesses which is the thing that i personally like uh, is because the the effect of change is quite big when it does work out that means that the reper- the, the repercussions of it and the ripple effect of it can affect a full industry but it's harder to do it is much harder to do it it's much easier to be the second person and most of the businesses that work actually from a business point of view are the second people you know usually because they have seen the mistakes that the first person has done so but if that's a personality thing right i did i didn't want to be the second yeah i wanted to be the first guy so i took the harder route and some of the businesses worked some of them failed and you have to accept that that if that that's the case because you're entering an unknown right so when you're entering a niche space and you want to widen that space i mean my intention was to do that in fact with tsm is that space we are entering a music education space but i think music education should everyone should have it everyone should learn music in some way or the other whether they make it their profession or not so again we have entered a space where we are giving a niche product to a niche uh, a bunch of people but the hope is that it expands into a bigger thing so that's a much longer uh the longer longer tail game you know when you when you do it like that if you want to come into a uh, overnight success you don't do that okay so that that uh, it won't it won't work if you want an overnight success you got to be that number two, three person who's already coming into a product into a market where the you see some, where there's some success already seen where the product has already been done you made a, just a little tweak on that product and do that so it it all depends on your intention of your startup or the intention of your company if your company is there to make a difference to do something like that a lot of it will take time and then you have to factor that time in into the funding you have to factor that time in into uh money coming back i i hope this i don't know i hope this answered your question a bit uh quite quite yes am i saying that right yes yeah yes i think uh the 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 takeaways till this discussion till this particular point is that you know your idea has to be a reflection of you so that forever and ever you can be connected to it am i am i right to conclude this thing ashutosh right and and uh, let's let's just move a little ahead in this and uh, talk to more kids i can't uh, believe the kind of questions that are posed and uh, the conversations that we are having kids are worried about uh, being uh, i mean you know uh, about the community being autistic about uh, the troubles that people are having regarding their backs so i can see no, it's, a it's, lot it's, of it's kids, amazing yeah. it's amazing the space that yes it's amazing the space that you guys are coming into yeah yes absolutely absolutely so commendable uh, set of kids and brilliant ideas you've already in your head there's a quite of lot of uh, observation that you have put in uh, while you are uh, thinking about uh, becoming entrepreneurs that's that's such a nice thing so let's let's uh, uh, go a little ahead in the in the presentation and learning so over to you ashish yeah. yeah okay so okay so if you guys are ready now the next part take notes is basically going to be about how to structure your business plan okay so so i i mean it's there are various ways of doing it there are what's it there are uh so if we go to the model right so if you guys are ready to go ahead with this i'm going to do i'm going i'm going to do that okay so take after you've got your idea now now i suggest 
you can use this as a template for the formation of your business plans. These are 10 other basic things that you need to look at. And I'll talk to you about each one of them. Okay. And uh, this is, this is again, this is not the, the one and only way to do it. This is just a suggested way of looking at a business. Sometimes your ideas would be, would require other, other factors, which are, might be more important, but that is for you to also decide. I'm talking more from a generic point of view, what is required to look at as a business, right? So if you look at this, right? The market, first thing, you got to identify your market. Like we were talking about it. Is it a mass market or is it a niche market? You got to think about that. First of all, it's a, not a bad idea going into a niche zone that you can have a high ticket, high ticket item. I'm talking about pure business now. You can have something that costs a lot, that's priced high, but sold to a few people. You still make a great, great business, right? But then you have to understand that you that you, you have to really get a sense of your uh, unit economics. You have to really get a sense of uh, how much profit you would I mean, simply put, how much profit you can make, at and how much investment of time and money is required to do that, and the and the value of that effort. So a mass market uh, is is everybody, for example, you know. So if you're looking at uh, Amazon, oh, yeah, you know, big basket. There are all these other, other commodities that are there. You know, anything to do with uh, any like a Unilever product and things like that. You know, your soaps and shampoos, all that stuff. So if you want to create a soap or a toothpaste that has got something amazing, something new, unique, something to it that you think is going to be, I mean, it's going to save everyone's teeth uh, much better. Or if you got some sort of oil, whatever. This is, you got to think about that. Now, this is, in general, when you're looking at a mass market thing, you're looking at some something that uh, is solving everyone's problem. Uh, Uber, uh, uh, even Scootsy, I would say, it's all over the place. These kind of things, is everyone eats, everyone orders. So that's a, there's a, there's a solution there, right? Uh, niche market, I would say, use my example of TSM, of True School of Music. That's kind of a niche market uh, business. Uh, where we're looking at music education for professional training, right? Not everyone wants to be a professional musician, but we started this school specifically for people who want to be professional musicians. Our positioning was, okay, if you're going to, if you're going to learn to be a musician, I want to train you in three to four years. And, and I want to make sure that after you graduate from, from, from us, you're going to be able to earn this much money. So our proposition was this, that we're going to make you employable. We're going to give add value to your life by making this music into a career, not just a hobby. That was True School's mission. It's like, um, so it's like find your true calling was our tagline, you know, if that's what it is. For example, but that's a niche market situation. You know, we have had 300, 400 students. So we have, we're, not, we're not looking at 100,000 students. Uh, it's not like, it's not like uh, uh, engineering colleges and things like that, you know. So you have to decide, but for me, for example, I'm passionate about music. I was passionate about that. It was very clear that it was it, it, it is a decision that I made to do that. In a mass market situation, you can have amazing impact on, on, on a lot of people with what you do. So it depends on that. You need to define the market through geography, where they are, or what, what you're going to do, the demographic, the psychographic, behavioral. Now, these things, I think I suggest you I won't go deep into it. I can answer a few questions, but you should think about these aspects of the defining the type of people. You know, what are the kind of people? What are the social strata that you are? Are you? Is it a? If you is it a five rupee biscuit packet that you're going to do that's going to go to certain all the masses, or is it a very expensive Chanel perfume type thing that you're going to do? It's going to be for for the rich people. You got to figure out that. What is the type of person that you the psychographic means what are the what are the proclivities what are the things that they tend to do what the people uh, some people are, are they prone to certain festivals are they prone to you know certain behaviors also you got to look at what are the what are the what are the everyday behavioral patterns of different people in different strata of society so all this makes a big difference on how who the people are 
that your your product fit. So the product market fit is what you got to look at. If your product and your market, so you got to be very clear about what your market is, the size of your market, how many people there, the affordability, all those kind of things, right? So step one is the market. Okay, let me move ahead. All right. Step two yeah. is- Ashtar, there's, there's is, a particular question. Yeah. Uh, or if, if you want sure. me to answer, I can answer this. The, ch uh, the children want to know what is, like, you know, when we classify, they want to know the difference between psychographic and behavioral market. I, I can also take this question, but I'll be happy. Yeah, to take why, don't you, why don't you go ahead? Take yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 so I'll, I'll uh, coming from the background of uh, a little economics that I learned, I'll, I'll uh, share the definition wise uh, understanding of it. So when you talk about the psycho psychographic marketing, it involves analyzing, understanding consumers based on their psychological characteristics, specifically based out of attitudes, beliefs, values, lifestyles, and interests. So particularly it dwells into the motivations and underlying psychological factors. For example, I would say psychographic marketing is very well used by Apple iPhone as a product, right? Now coming to the behavioral marketing, it focuses on consumers' actual behaviors and actions, right? So the basic difference is this. Now, when we talk about behavioral, uh, uh, particularly the behavioral uh, aspect of marketing, it examines patterns, uh, actions, such as, you know, your purchase history, what have you been buying? Um, so suppose, you know, I, I have an inclination towards a spicy brand of chips. That That is my action. You know, I am frequently going and buying that spicy brand of chips. Or I'm more inclined towards the dark chocolate uh, kind of a flavor of chocolate. So that is behavioral marketing. And when it comes to your attitude, beliefs, and, you know, your aspirations, which are the uh, which are more oriented towards, um, I would say, not that in terms of very clear, clearly marked on your buying patterns, that is psychographic. I hope uh, I remember my lessons well, and I could answer this, no, but I, I type it for more clarity. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, kids, for the reason no, no. this question. Yeah. Good, good. No, no, you keep keep adding, please, please. Yeah, yeah, I uh, do that. The more more of us talk, and actually, you know, guys, I would love to hear your thoughts also. What you think something is, it's okay because this is this is which is kind of going into, uh, like I said from the very beginning, there's, not, there's nothing hard and fast. I'm saying this way or that way. These are these are just a way of looking at things, right? Which is which is which is what I'm trying to help you guys out with. Right, so that's the market. Any other questions of the market? We move on. I've got, we got nine of us, so we need to maybe it's eight already. Okay. All right. The value proposition, right? What is that? A value proposition tells prospects why they should do business with you rather than your competitors, right? So what have I been going on about? Your USP, whatever makes you different. You want to think about that. What? makes the benefits of your product and services clear. So it's very clear what your benefits are and why you are better than someone else or why they should do business with you. You know, that is something that needs to be very clear. And I think this is this, this is like your tagline or your elevator pitch or whatever. You know, you need to think about it, think about it like that. It has to be specific, very specific. What are the specific benefits? the customer will receive. Think about that. What are the very specific things? Everything is a, uh, it's, you know, whether the best business is they keep saying whether it's a carrot or a painkiller, right? So you need to make sure. So if it's a painkiller, people are going to consume because they bear in pain, they're going to have something to kill that pain, correct? So your product, if it's an immediate painkiller, it's going to be the biggest success ever, you know? And how how does it fix that pain? So that proposition, the value proposition itself should be very indicative of how your company and your product is going to fix that pain. And 
how are you different from someone else? Is it exclusive? Is it uh, something that you have? How, how is it that we, is, is desirable, you know? And what makes you different from someone else? That is something that should come across in your, in your uh, value proposition, you know? And like, for example, if you look at Uber or uh, iPhone, you know, Smule, whatever. If you start thinking about brands in this way, think about what they mean and what they say and how easy it is. So Uber, the smartest way to get around. I mean, that's a very simple way of putting how Uber is helping us out, right? So it's so think about this. It'll be really interesting for you guys, I say, to to um, to play around with this idea, right? Write down a whole whole bunch of value propositions, T, which is the one that resonates the most with. It's, it's really fun to do these also because it's like, it becomes your company tagline, which is really great because it sums up what you say, everything. And, and, and it's a great exercise because it makes you think more and more and more and more about how, see guys, we have to keep this as simple as possible. It's because someone has to get it in the first shot of what your company is ideally, right? If the more you have to explain something, it's going to be hard to sell. So like we say, yes, keep it simply stupid. That's how you need to think about your communication because you don't want to make this into too complicated things. Especially if your product is complicated, you want to make sure that, that your communication is simple. So you got to think about this. So the value proposition is, is I guess, like a summary of what, what your business is about. Okay, so see what your market, your product market fit, your value proposition, right? Uh, any questions over here? There's there's a very interesting question about taglines. So, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, do you think that taglines are important even for a niche market? So, uh, I mean, how important? See, I, see, see. I think I, I do think they are, they are important because I think it, it's a reminder. It's a, something that someone resonates with because if if it if it hits a nerve, if it hits something that that oh god that, that oh god oh this is cool, it'll stay with you. You need something. No matter, don't you okay? Okay, please don't think of advertising as a bad thing. It's about, in one sense, it's about communication. You got to basically, whatever, how noble your idea is, people have to know about it and how great your concept is. People have to get it, right? So that's what you, these taglines help us do that. And it actually helps summarizes your basic concept. And if you can do it in a cool, catchy way, that's amazing because then they're going to remember it, right? So I think it, it's a can good you... exercise to do. Yeah, and I, I do believe it's, yeah. Can you can you elaborate a little bit more? Kids want to know what is a tagline, and uh, you know, a little little I more. I mean, like if if you look at this, right? If 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 you look at if you look at this, I mean, if you just think about this, uh, if you think about, for example, Apple iPhone, right? I mean, Nike, just do it. Is is that right? It basically emphasizes the philosophy of your company. It emphasizes or it represents the philosophy of your company and it represents what your, what your product actually is in one sense, you know? Now, some of, it, some of it can be metaphorical or some of it can be literal, right? Like the smartest way to get around is more literal, right? I, but I think what's amazing is the experience is the product. That's, what that, that's a cool one because we think it's, it, the, the iPhone is the cool thing and all, but actually Steve Jobs was not about I mean, his design was the, was the UX, uh, you know, the experiential aspect of how to make it simple, what to do. I mean, the fact that, 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 that uh, you only, you have to use one thumb, whatever, it's, it's you gotta think about that. So I really, I, 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 just, I got this very well when, when I saw the experience as the product. And to me, that made complete sense and that resonated with me. So, so the taglines are, you gotta try them out. It's it's an um, and and honestly, if it yes, advertising agencies, people in marketing can come up with them. But in my opinion, if the 
if it's really if it's if if the product and service is really uh, uh, well entrenched in the founder's mind, they should be able to even come up with this because this is the core of what you're doing in one sense. Another very interesting question, Ashdosh. What are the skills that an entrepreneur should have, regardless of the market and competition? Ayush uh, has raised this question, and uh, because again, we're talking about value proposition here. So, what are the skills, sorry, the entrepreneur should have that an entrepreneur should have, regardless of the market and competition? Regardless of what, okay, the many, I, and I, I honestly think. The, the the biggest one is is that is is the drive. I think if you don't have the drive to go through with what you started with, if you don't have to have the drive to uh, reach the finish line, you're not going to able to do anything. So it's that it's that that's the main thing. And then then through that drive comes the different skills. So the skills themselves are actually some skills are hired skills, which is also okay. So you're not expected to know everything. Like if you're, if you're, if you're a product guy, or if you're an ideas guy, they may not necessarily. Uh, you may not necessarily have to be the CFO of the company. You know, so that's okay. So certain skills can be hired, or certain skills can you can get. A- to go back to the same thing is that one of the hardest things to do ever in your life. It's the most fun thing to do, but it's the hardest thing to do. So keeping that in mind, that perseverance is 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 the most important thing. All right. Yeah. So okay, do taglines affect the how much the business is that. profitable? Okay, what do we have next? Can you hear okay, me, Ashish? It's getting a little bit. Can you hear me? Do tag, do taglines affect how much? The, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, do this is the question. Do taglines affect how much the business is profitable? Well, well, if the tagline helps you more customers, yeah, of course it is. If the tagline helps you get your message across much more, if your tagline helps you remember things. If a tagline helps it helps someone just instantly understand what your product is about, or wanting to try it out at least, you know, uh, or to get them, like the tagline opens the door for you. All these things are the way are, are what are going to increase your business, and if it increases your business, hopefully you've got a business model that's profitable model. So then that's how that's how it should work, and that's a separate. I'm not even going to get into that in this this presentation, but at the end of the day, guys. You gotta make do a business that actually makes money. Uh, at the, uh, the all the businesses that happen, we've seen them. You get a lot of funding, and the funding is all debt, and they're not making any profits. Eventually, it's just about transferring the problem from one person, one investor to another. Usually, in these businesses, I would focus on a business that actually makes operational profit, and that is, I think, is important. So keep that in mind. And in and in view of that, you want to think about how you're going to distribute your 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 product or your service. Is it a physical? Is it digital? Is it physical? Now that's a new term people are using. Are you using wholesalers, retailers? Is it a direct to consumer? So all this stuff has to be written down in a business plan. You need to think through this very clearly. What is the primary distribution channel? What is the secondary distribution channel? Right. So, is it a word of mouth? Uh, is is it like a reference based thing, or is it uh, uh, purely digital? You know, so you need to understand that we need to. I need to the investor. If I'm the investor, I need to have a very clear idea of how you are getting your product or service to your customer. This is what this means. How are you getting it to your customer? Right? Is it through Amazon? Is, it, so is that is that how you're going to do it? Through, are you going to sell over there? Is it through your own website? Is it through a physical store? Are you so that these are the things that you need to with this? This makes a big difference in your cost structure. So you need to think about 
because the all this is very 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 different cost structures physical and digital so mainly th i think this is uh, this is a very distinctive topic to talk about which is very specific to certain brands and certain products so this is something that uh, i'm happy to uh, i will chat about if someone has a question about this before i go on to the next thing but this it's it's simply put it's how are you getting your product or service to the customer you need to be very clear about that and how much is that costing you yeah all right yeah let's let's continue and then we'll come back to questions again ashutosh you are yeah. Uh, yeah yeah then then you got to think about customer relationships right what kind of relationship are you going to have with the customer uh so that's a real Is it a transaction? Is uh, Ashutosh, your connection is weak again. Okay. Would you Would you like to uh, go? Uh, come. You yeah. Me? Your Your connection is very weak, uh, Ashutosh. We are like unable to hear you again. Thank God. Yeah. should we uh, can can i have some assistance from the tech team should we go out and then come back again will it help pradeep are you there can you can one, you tell me see one more uh so i think the why yeah we are unable to hear you like Mm. Oh, give us a minute. There is some little trouble. I'll get resolved. Um. In the meanwhile, I can just tell you one thing. Uh, we need to wait for a little while to know uh how you all are going to do the submissions. So regarding the submissions, please hold on your questions. You will get an email uh soon after the. Workshop is over, right? Uh, Ashutosh, you're back, right? I, I, it seems a better connectivity also. I think I'm back. Yes. I think I'm back. Yeah. I'm back. Okay. Better, better now. You can hear All right, me. I'm back, everybody. Okay, great. So let's see. Okay, so here we go. Hang on. Okay, so. I was talking about your. Is everyone going okay? Give give a thumbs up if everyone's okay. Everyone's alive. All right. Very good. I hope this is not too intense for any of you. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now, Smriti? Okay. So. Super. Okay. So guys, so I want to talk. What is your customer relations? So is it someone that, for example, is your customer just going to buy your product once or service once, and then you don't have to ever see them again for four years or five years or one year? That's one type of relationship. That means your whole strategy towards them is going to be very different, right? What is um, what they call is what is your customer uh, lifetime value of your of your customer? So you want to think about that, or is it someone who's buying something every day? Then you have a completely different approach to how you are interacting with your customer. Is it something that, if it's if it's like a what is it? If it's like a, I know all of you guys or many of you are for these something like a Scooty or a Swiggy or something like that. People are doing it every day, right? So there's a relationship there. So that means the communication that you have with that with the with your customer there has a completely different strategy. Then, if you are selling a fridge or something like that, because you buy that once in every ten years or something, you know, so 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 you need to understand what that is going to be, and that's going to affect a lot in your business, right? So define the relationship you have with your customer, because that's going to affect your uh, your customer retention plans, how you're going to keep keeping them going, uh, and you, uh, maybe you got a product where You need your customer to sell your product. Maybe you got some kind of a reference thing that's happening there. So that means your customers are there, are your uh, part of your sales teams. In fact, sometimes you can do that. And 
your ambassadors. You will have a completely different approach when you are talking to them if they're your ambassadors or if they're your they're, if they're your one-time client, right? So think about that. And it's going to affect your costs. It's going to affect your strategy. That's going to affect uh, um, your advertising. That's going to affect how you uh, how you internally have your system set up. It's a, so there's a lot. There's a lot to do because this is your main communication with the person that your business depends on. Remember that. And so your your your, your the teams that you hire are, are within the company are going to be very determined by this by this equation that you come up with. Right. So customer relationship very important. All right. You got to make money. How are you making it? Where is it coming from? What are the revenue streams? That means what are the areas with which you're making money? Is it an app that has got subscription? That's a revenue stream, right? So that means every monthly you're getting recurring revenues coming in. Do you have in-app purchases? That means is it every once in a while you buy something from the app, if it's an app? Or do you have annual subscription? Or it's a lifetime subscription, lifetime buyer? What is it? What is the way that you're planning to earn money. And it's really important because then, again, your systems and everything is put into place based on this. Is it, if it's a service, if it's a product, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a real car, I mean, it's an expensive thing, right? So how you, how you're going to be able to sell that? So that means you're going to get financing and board, all that stuff. So revenue streams are very, it's the core of how you're going to earn money, where, how and the paths with which you earn money. So that's very important. So I have to really, really write down and think about this in a very clear way because there are various options always in this situation. So that then this is very really specific. If you have any questions on this, I'm happy to answer that. Okay. So I'm going to kind of zip through this now a little bit so that you just have your steps and then we can maybe come back and, and talk about a few things before we close. Yeah. Yep, what we should do a yeah, quick recap, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so step six, key resources, guys. What does that mean? Like, what are you using to make your company happen, right? People, human resources is people, right? So who are the people? What are the kind of people? What is it and how expensive is that? Uh, do, you have, do, you, uh, do you have to get like uh, PhDs who are really into some kind of unique tech, which is really expensive. And then through that, is there, are there intellectual property that's involved? How, what is the cost of building intellectual property, intellectual resources? That means the stuff, intellectual resources is IP. Are we, are we creating concepts going to, which are going to earn money later on? You know, it's like, I mean, an example of that would be like a song. If I, if I write a song, the song is an IP and the song then can be monetized later on in various ways, you know? Um, so who are the ones doing that? Who are the ones that are doing the, the actual, uh, the, the, the marketing team, the, the production team, all that stuff. You got to think about that. Physical resources. Do you need to build a factory? Do you need space? Do you need machines? Do you need, how are you going to, is it a, is it a physical product? Even if it's a digital product, what are the physical things you require? You need servers, you need this, all that stuff. So this is basically breaking down what your business is and how your business is made and how it operates. You need to think about that from the physical, human, intellectual point of view. Oh, and then when, when that, this will give you the costs of actually, of how to, what key things, of how to actually run your business. So key resources, another thing, right? Key activities. What does your company do? Is the main thing, is, is that it makes something? Is the main thing that it's solving something? Is the main thing that it's connecting something? So this has to be again very clear, right? What does your company do, right? Is it a logistics company? You know, like look, so for example, Domino's, right? When they started Domino's pizzas, the company was not a pizza company. 
It was a delivery company. It was a logistics company. Tesla is not a car company. It's a data company. It's collecting most of its value is getting increased because of the data that's, that, that the company can collect through all its various, for example. So you need to actually understand the core activity that your company does and the value that it is. So, so here again, it'll be very, very different for different, different people. So you need to deep dive into what it is that your company does, right? And be very, very clear about that. Okay, next. Partnerships. Nothing happens in isolation, honestly. You always have to have someone or so you're depending on someone, something, uh, some, some people, because you won't be, uh, uh, Apple is depending on thousands of partners to create the phone, right? So, so whether they're making something here or there or sourcing things, doing, so depending on your product, you really need to, you really need to understand what the, what the, the value of these partnerships and how important they are in delivering your product or your service. Because first of all, if you are stuck with a partner who is very, very important, but you have limited options, that's a very dangerous situation, right? Because if that partner, you lose that partner, then your whole business goes for a toss. So you gotta think about that. Is that is there a danger within that situation? Do I have options when this person is gone or this company is gone? Is there something else there? Very often, this is the problem, especially when you're doing um, stuff with intellectual property, so especially when you're doing, you know, cutting edge stuff, when you're doing frontier stuff, where very often there's not that many people that are working in, in the space that you're doing it. So you need to be careful about this. And how are they incentivized to stay with you? How are you treating your partners? You know, are they, are, when you're doing well, are they doing well also? Have you, made a, have you made a good arrangement with them? When you're doing bad, are they saving you? Are they helping you out or are they making it worse for you? That means the commitments that you make to them. You can have various types of commitments. You know, a revenue share commitment you can have. Maybe you just say that, okay, if I earn 100, I'll give you 20, right? And if I earn zero, you get nothing. That's a relationship that you can have so that you're not out of pocket. So you need to understand that. And as for if you're manufacturing something, you're making something, it's it's ultra critical where if, you're, if your materials are coming from somewhere, who's going to do that? How consistent are they going to be? What are your dependencies on this? And how is it threatening your, your actual delivery? So that I feel is something that not too many people think about, but we need to go deep. And this honestly, it's a, it's, you have to be very objective about this because there may be, there may be some, some of your friends or whatever, but you can't do that. You have to, you have to be very objective when you're looking at your business plan. And, and I'm not talking about being cold. I'm not talking about being uh, uh, rude and things like that. I'm just saying that you have to be very clear that, okay, if this partner does not deliver, what do I do? And if my, my delivery of my product is dependent on this partner, what do I do if that person doesn't do it or that company doesn't do it? So that is very important because every, most companies have partners. So you have to understand the value of them. So don't underestimate this aspect of it. Right. Then we'll get the price structure. Are you cost-driven or value-driven? What does that mean? Cost-driven means that you are, if you are in a market with someone else and you doing a similar product, but you're charging less. So that means you will drive customers your way. Uh, for a, so if I have to choose between A and B, and honestly, there's not that much of a difference, but B is cheaper than A, I'll take B. And if you're the guy who's got a product which is B, because you found a cheaper way to produce that product, which is your USP, then this is a good strategy. Because then you already, then you're coming in at a lower cost and, uh, and you're taking market share from someone else who's already who's, the, who's leading the market. So that's a great way to do it. Value driven is by saying that I'm charging the same I'm charging the same amount as the other guy, 
but my product is much better. That means in that sense, the customer thinks that, oh, I'm getting a deal because I'm getting much more from this, but I'm getting, I'm paying the same amount, for example. So you can decide that also as a philosophy, that this is, it's our company, because we, be, we believe a product is a much better experience than the other one, and we believe it's got a premium. So we will either charge more or we'll charge the same, but we give more. So that's how you are, that's another way to think about your pricing. So price structure um, uh, also depends on, on, on your profitability, your, your costs, all those things. So the, there's a whole financial angle to this. I think, I think you'll have lots of talks and we'll do some stuff on finance later, but I think that is something you should think about very clearly in a, in, in a bit. Okay. Uh, I'll do one last time, but then we'll answer some questions. Competitor analysis, right? Be very clear about this, guys. You really need to uh, uh, research, research, research. Don't just, and also don't just research about what is there. Think about history, his, historically, what was there. Look at patterns, what happens between competitors, okay? You will learn a lot from what has happened in the past, right? If you're two competitors that are fighting with each other for a certain market, what is going to happen? I mean, even if you want to look at McDonald's and Burger King fighting for a certain market, and if you trace the history of what happens over there, who wins and not, it's really important for you to understand how someone did conquer a market or not. That's first of all, that general competitor analysis. Then you've got your actual competitor analysis to your product. And now be truthful and honest about how much better they are, what and this is very investor very obvious. So this we be objective about this. Don't just say like it should this is not an emotional thing. Don't think they're aware that that doesn't mean anything. That could be how exactly why. In terms of numbers, in terms of you know, in terms of cost, in terms of it measurable, measurable metrics is what you need to think about when you're comparing these metrics. Because then, honestly, you're not fooling yourself. You actually, <laughs> the idea is to get a actually get a clearer. clearer Oh, I am really sorry. I think, again, uh, there's some connectivity issue. Uh, Ashutosh will be back in a minute. But in the meanwhile, I can see some familiar faces. Hi, Harshit. How are you? Nice to see you. I, I hope we have made our notes uh, and I, I just wanted to add a little bit here. So all these workshops that are online, please be very careful. These are the learning lessons which will all get together for I'm back. all of Sorry. you. Yeah, I was just giving them a little glimpse that all these online workshops are going to, you know, actually fall into the learning experiences of you making, uh, uh, coming up with your own business idea. Some of you must be having it already, but you can all tweak it with all these lessons that you're learning right now. So over back to you, Ashutosh. Yeah, well, I'm kind of done in this, in, in terms of, what we the, the the different things that I wanted to cover, and I hope this has been helpful, guys. I mean, um, and uh, think about these things because this is a good start. I think uh, even if you have an idea already and already, uh, try and relook at it through this lens to try and look uh, look clarity first of all, objectivity, uh, and it's a reality check. Um, at the end of the day, when you go up for investment, you're stripped down to not, nothing, right? You are standing there naked in front of people, and you're going to have to answer each and every question, each and everything. You should know your stuff inside out. You should have done your research. There should be nothing that you can't answer. And that only happens when you're very objective about it 
and all be passionate about it as a person that you are because you will keep it up but we will step out and look at it objectively and look at all the faults in your plans because there will be lots there are lots the quarter they'll be there and first of all let me tell you something most of the business plans that happen when the businesses do take off immediately start changing but you have to get your core idea correct and that i believe is something that i hope i've been able to help you with and um, yeah i hope you guys had a good session was it okay can i see some thumbs up or down <laughs> all right where was uh, is everyone here? Okay, now okay. they can. Everyone is here, uh, Ashosh. Yes, the there's a lot of thumbs up going uh, in the air. That's so nice of all of you, Sonal, Angel, Gurleen. Thank you so much to oh, all of oh, you for raising the thumbs up. Okay, so so before before we move on, uh, we have about uh, another 20 minutes to take your question, not exactly 20, but 15. Um, the first thing is that there are still some questions that are pending and I wanted to ask uh, particularly to Ashtosh to answer these questions. One of them is a very good question. I wanted to ask that how can a student work for making a company without compromising with their academics? Would you like to take on this question, Ashutosh? Oh, who can make a company without compromising the academics? Okay. Uh, uh, are, you, are, are you talking about a high school student or a college? These are all high school students. Right? High about, school students. You don't want to mess up your... You don't want to mess up with 12th standard. You don't want to start a business. Is that what the question is? So I start my business when I'm in school? Yes. Is, is, is and and he doesn't want to miss the school. <laughs> okay. Sorry? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, Ashutosh. Sorry, what so, were you saying? I was saying okay. that, would you like to take well, on this question? Want... That yeah, well, well, first of all, you're in school, okay? And, and, and I think you should stay in school. <laughs> That's just the thing, because you're going to learn a lot to be able to do your business correctly after you be in school. So I think this is a great time for you to uh, uh, conceive of concepts and ideas and work on business plans and all those things, because I think th that takes a lot of time. And that, that homework, if you can prepare yourself while you're in school to with your idea, and once you're out of school, you can start thinking about how to execute that idea. You'll you you'll be much better off. Uh, and also, there's a lot of fundamental things that you still need to learn when you're at, at the age that you guys are right now. You know that. So don't underestimate that because that is going to help you in your ideas later on. Don't underestimate what you can do now. Don't underestimate what you can do in college. Really, really, because that can be. You know, it's it's all cool and all to say, yeah, college dropouts are billionaires and all, but you know, that's that's just those few. And I and I, I believe if you you can use college as a serious place to really learn what you are about, discover yourself completely, and if you are and find out how your passion, the part from your passion to your profession can really happen, and that's a time to experiment with things where you're, you know, you're in a safety net. We're not really, uh, you know, getting into trouble uh, in the real world, but you're trying your thought ideas out. I think it's really important to do that, to go through those exercises. So, that, I mean, that's my opinion. I mean, some people might have a different way of approaching it. But I do believe that the education part is really key and really important for us to be able to execute our ideas properly. Be careful about jumping into something too soon. Because sometimes you think you have all the answers, but then, oops, suddenly you realize you don't. Um, so that's 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 another dangerous thing to think of, to be concerned about. So I want you all to be excited right now. I want you to do this business plan. I want you to do all this stuff. And I'm sure we're going to find the right way to make this thing happen, come to reality. Uh, but how to do it while you're doing this, while you're, I think it's very easy to do it while you're in school, but not to not at the, don't mess up your school to do it. That's what I would say. Because then that will be self-defeating. <laughs> you would have a chance to do it if we do badly in school. That's my take. 
Nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you, Ashutosh, for this. One more question, uh, which, uh, you know, although it's not just one, there are a couple of uh, questions around this. So a lot of kids have this that, you know, when it comes to a business idea, should be should it be primarily driven on money? Like if I if I think about a business idea or if I think about a particular product or a service, should I first primarily think about the money? that how much of money I'm going to earn out of it and then uh, start working on the idea? Uh, or should I just start with the idea? Like your presentation said oh. it should be the idea. Yeah, but, okay. but yes, oh. yes, yes. The money aspect of it. Okay, so first first of all, that there are okay, the way I'm interpreting this, there are two, two types of money aspects, okay? One type of money aspect is how much am I personally going to earn? If I do this business, if you are starting off with that, you're starting up, I feel you're on the path to failure. So if you start thinking about, okay, if I start this business, I'm going to have so much in my bank account. I want to do that thing. Don't fool yourself. Not the way it works. And I will not go down that path for yourself. Okay, that's one thing. If you have the idea and you believe in it enough, the money comes. Let me tell you that. And when it works, it works. So from my experience, if you think about your bank account before the business, it's a bad idea. Think about the idea first and then the bank account will happen. That's a for your personal thing. Secondly, for the company itself, okay? Do you need to earn money to the company? Of course you do. That's the thing. It's about, it's, if, if the intention of the company is the product and the product and the, and the continuous use of the product or service, the, you have to have the ability to continually do the product and service. And to be able to continue to do the product and service, you have to able to have a sustainable business model. That means sustainable business model as a business plan means that you're earning money and you're doing operational profits and then so that the business can continue. So your intention may be pure and you may not think that, oh, I, I want to do this because I believe it needs to be done. But if the, but if the company or the institute or whatever you're setting up does not earn money to sustain itself, first of all, it's a bad, it's a bad idea because then, then your idea is going to die before it, it can get to places where it should. So there has to be the aspect of earning money and the aspect of profitability in everything that you want to be sustainable. I'm talking about financially sustainable. I'm talking about the business being sustainable itself. If you're about sustainability and you want to do business about economic. Uh, uh, global sustainability and environmental sustainability, you have to have a, a company or or a, or an institute or something that can actually survive, right? To continue doing its job. So that also requires money. The fact is people need to be paid salaries. The fact is things cost stuff and a company needs that to do it. So it's important to look at the, the reason to make the money. Again, I was say one thing. If you are starting to start the company to say, oh, the company, I'm going to be a billionaire, my advice is, unless you already have your idea this thing ready, that's a bad way to start. Okay, That's the way, that's what I personally think. But sustainability of a business is key. That means the company should make enough money to be able to sustain itself. Then the value of what you do what you get out of that company will really be then determined by how someone interprets the value. Like how much would I pay for that company? Then, you know, because wow, you've affected so many people. So very, very often these companies are valued without making any revenues. And that's a very different, that's a different ball game. And in my opinion, what is happening there is investors are investing into a company which is not making any money. They're raising value. Okay. And the value that they're raising is that they're convincing someone else that it's worth something else so that they can sell off their shares that pass the problem out to someone else. To me, that is not a sustainable business, no matter how big it is. And I've seen that happen big time with a lot of companies that, uh, that were big and have died. So that's not sustainable. So you need to be practical about it. You need to be real about it. Uh, and yeah, the company should make money to survive. You need to do that. No matter how noble your goal is, the fact that it should be financially 
stable is very important for you to for you to achieve your targets so ashish one more yeah. very interesting question mayank uh, mayank singh has this is it possible to have an idea which is not much uh, innovative but has a mass appeal and we wish to launch it with some twist so like you know what do you say about it so uh, it's it's there's not okay so you are talking about no if if it's not if it's got mass appeal okay if it's got mass appeal <clears throat> does it have <clears throat> sorry okay another another let me think to do not mistake marketing plans for the product okay <laughs> i think everyone and i keep getting this a lot with everyone yeah i've got this great idea of how to sell this product yeah that's a marketing strategy that's it okay i don't mistake that for the product itself so that means if and if that marketing strategy doesn't work then the whole company is gone so you got to be careful about mixing the message with the product itself so you're not <clears throat> trying to sell unless you unless you start your product is an agency that is selling products right that's different then that's okay then you're doing a marketing agency that's cool then you then you then you can think of ways of selling other products and that is your thing that is your usp that's cool i can i can live with that but if you got a product and your only usp is how you're going to sell it that's a bit dangerous so someone else can do it too the minute you do it someone else can do it too and and what is stopping them from doing it and how are you do that yeah. what is your usp go come back to that thing what is the unique selling proposition that you have so and it can't in my opinion just be a quirky funky cool way of selling something i hope that answers your question all right so smriti i think are we good uh, we are we... absolutely good as priyanshu was asking what to do if our product has never been launched so what to do in the competitor analysis like you know how do you uh, analyze when when your product has not been launched how do we do that oh no so 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 that's okay okay good question because what i mean by in your business plan you will have a certain uh, in your business plan you will have those answers there in your plan right what your product is going to do in the market so that means that's your plan Yeah, my product is going to be twenty percent cheaper than this one. My product is going to be this. So whatever you end up, whatever you end up as your product, whatever your product is going to be in your business plan, product or service is going to be, you should be able to answer that. Uh, you should be able to compare that and do a competitive analysis with the current products in the market. So that, that's all I'm saying. Doesn't mean you're you're not assessing, you're projecting your plans and and comparing that with current look. current uh, other products which you think are are competitors that generally how you do it does that make sense i think sweetie that made sense right okay absolutely okay But, yeah, so uh, um, good, good good question we we are uh, absolutely bang on time and uh, regarding okay i'll i'll take 5 minutes and uh, go about because there are a lot of questions around this thing that how do we do the submissions and how we do the other things just 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 a little round up for all of you so tomorrow we are meeting uh, again uh, the first workshop today was about transforming an idea from discovery to reality so we started from the idea itself and you know uh we we actually talked about how the entire business model is brought into the terms in terms of reality right you know what 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 you have perceived or what you are thinking of is actually put into uh you know shape this was the first workshop which we are about to conclude in another 5 10 minutes tomorrow we are going to actually build we we're going to build build a complete business model and uh, mr pranav would be here who's also a ceo and uh, he's is the founder of dsj keep learning a stanford alumni what we are going to do is we are going to soon circulate the link with all the details for your submissions keep your learning um, 
actions more oriented in these workshops because none of the speakers are gonna you know you are not going to meet them ever again because they they are really really very experienced when it comes to industry right you know if, if i say that how how deeply they have gone into understanding the industry i mean uh, i i would say that you'll not need these people uh, so easily on this platform right so please make sure that again uh, your your notes are on your uh, you know pencils your notepads are working and uh, once all the workshops will be done you will get all the guidelines so regarding your submissions uh, please stop asking questions you will get all the guidelines how do you submit there's a full fledged powerpoint presentation which is formatted you will have to submit in that format exactly in that format it is unanimous for all the kids who are participating right so please do not worry about your submissions right now you're in a in the learning round so let's be more focused right so back to ashutosh again there's still some questions which are unanswered i'll so, take a few more and I'm, then we'll close it I'm, yeah you're saying something ashutosh oh no no i'll just say back but if you have one or one, one, one or two more questions uh, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. There is a very, very uh, good question by Raghu Anj, who's asking. My venture is about helping people integrate into society. Should profitability be one of my major goals and make people pay a monthly or tri-monthly premium, or should it be free of cost? I, 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 okay, first of all, I don't understand what you mean by integrate into society. So, is it that? So, I don't know what that means. So, I can't answer that question because that doesn't. I mean, is it, I don't know, is okay. it people who are coming out of jail that are integrated into society or what? I, I Or or is it some a physical ailment that they're integrating into society? I don't know. So, so first of all, first of all, if it's free of cost, if it's free, first of all, how are you going to run your business? I answer that question. I, it's, okay, if we're doing it free and it's if it's a service that is free and advertising is paying for it and you've got a business model, then you can do it free. Uh, but as long as you have a revenue source, you need revenue sources to obviously run your company. You need money to, to do that. So you got to figure that out. Now, whether you charge your customer for it or whether you want to charge an advertiser for it, or whether you want to charge someone else for it, that can be part of your business plan. So remember that. So necessarily some businesses don't charge the customer, right? Um, so, so and some businesses, the customer is the business in the sense of Facebook. I mean, like we are the products where they're trying to get, the monetizing us. So, but, but we're not paying for it, right? But we're paying for it in other ways. So it all depends on, on that. So, so I can't really answer the question with, uh, with, uh, with what you asked me, but I would say that remember again, that your business needs to earn money in some way or the other, whether you charge the customer, you want to charge someone else for it, but it needs to be sustainable by it earning money. And to mon because it needs to pay people to run the business. That's a fundamental thing. So as long as you've got that covered and you've got a plan for that, you're Pricing strategy can be anything. It can be free or it can be expensive. Right. There's there's one more very interesting question. How do you stay ahead of the competition and maintain a competitive advantage in the market? Well, that is that is that is something that's that's uh, okay. That that is very very important. First of all, because don't think. Good question. Good question. Don't think because you have done something that you're done. Don't think because, because there is, it's never, what you, that's what I meant. When you start a company, even if you become successful, you can lose that success immediately because someone else will come and take over. Someone else do that. So your product or your service has to constantly evolve to what is, to, to, to the world, to what's happening, to the demands. And some, in some cases, your evolution can create that demand, which is what like Apple does. You know, you can make you want things and make you want stuff, stuff that you don't want. You didn't th think you needed or think you wanted. So, so even big companies like that have to evolve. So no one stays still. And remember that. That is why it's important that you really love what you're doing because you it's it doesn't end. <laughs> it doesn't it, it doesn't end. 
And if, if you retire, then someone else is taking over and it's still continuing, evolving and changing. So keeping a competitive edge is is the is constantly has to constantly be in play because it's very easy if you're successful someone can just copy it and do something and come out because they've seen a formula right and you've already done it and someone can copy your formula and do it so that means you have to keep evolving your formula and that is very very important can we yeah, can we yeah, uh, we should. Uh, uh, Pradeep, can you please unmute? Allow uh, Harshit to unmute. Hi, uh, thanks, Pradeep, and uh, thanks, Ajitosh. It's really a pleasure, always a pleasure listening to you and getting insights. Uh, last May, we were there at Vijaypur University, and it was really thrilling to know your entire journey and the way you really. Uh, you started with business and then music. How did you land into? So uh, while you're talking about competitive edge, it's it's so important to have that uh, competitive advantage. Uh, but often it happens that you know when there are a couple of ideas being thought about, uh, because of there being a dilemma or absence of conviction in one of the business ideas, it gets a lot of delayed into putting a hammer on one of them and actually put down the foot and start working on it. So can you please share mm. some way in which how can we test that, you know, how should we decide upon which idea and so that we can start moving on to it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I, just, I think what I'm just saying is that when there's, there's, there's always debate that goes on about which one to do, or which, which strategy to use and all, all that stuff, right? I mean, okay, so there, there is that problem that, that, that happens where you're constantly debating and you're not making up your mind. And let me tell you, at the, at the end of the day, it needs that conviction will come from, okay, another thing I don't believe in really is a democracy, right? In one sense, in a way, setting, a, setting up, I'm talking about a company, not in, not in politics in, in the world, I don't believe in that for sure. I'm talking about when you're in a company, at some point, someone's got to take the call. At some point, the buck ends with someone and someone takes responsibility for it, right? Which the CEO does or the founder does or whatever. So, and at some point, that person is going to make a mistake and that's okay. So, it's okay to make mistakes, guys. And it's in the sense that sometimes they're very expensive mistakes, but you got to make them to understand what, otherwise, if it is... If it is caught in this in this uh, dilemma, non-action zone, that's even worse. I believe that it's better to to put deadlines and make decisions. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I do this with music. Okay, now music. When I'm composing music, people are saying like, "Okay, I'm waiting for inspiration and all." Forget that. I got to do it. I know by eight o'clock tomorrow I want to compose my song, even if it's my own deadline. I'll give myself a deadline. I'll make decisions and make choices, and I'll end it. Now, whether it's the best choice or not, I'll figure out later on whether the audience likes the songs or not. But I can't just keep deliberating for like two months. Then the audience is never going to hear the song, for example, you know. So I think it's really key for us to recognize people who will make those decisions and who will actually take the call and support that. Because when a call is taken, then everyone should go be behind it. And then it, then it's a bad call. It's a bad call. It's fine. But it was the call. You know, it was someone you made a decision, and I think that is is one of the most important things a founder or a CEO can do is be decisive. And uh, and it's scary, it is scary to be decisive. It is because because if it fails, it's all on you. But if you're really passionate about it and you have those USPs that I was talking about, it becomes much easier to take that fall because you know your conviction is still there. When it doesn't happen is what you mentioned, when the actual conviction is not there, when people are just coming there and making suggestions for the sake of it, or they think the job, if they're supposed to do it, they think that's their job. That's another bad thing. If you have people on board who are just doing it for the job and they're working only nine to five and they want to go back, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work because that that'll work after a very, very established company after years and years, and you know, and the systems are in place. But in the beginning, it's full on. Everyone's all in. And that's how it's got to be. And that's why it's hard. And that's why it's easy to, to say no. It's easy to give up. And that's why 95% of the people give up. 
is those few percent that persevere are the ones that succeed. Those are the ones we hear about. We only hear about the successes. We don't hear about the failures, guys. Remember that. And there are, the ratio is huge. I'm saying like 95, 96% failure, 4% success, that type of thing, you know? So, yeah. yeah thanks All a lot. Right. That was really a million dollar advice because <laughs> this is what we see as students or budding entrepreneurs being stuck up. But the way you say it, you got to put down the deadline and then everybody got to be for that mission. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, it was so good. It was so happy. I'm, I'm hope, yeah. I hope it's helpful. I really, I sincerely hope I've tried to help you guys. And I wanted to help you get you on some kind of a track. Uh, again, like I said, this is just my way of looking at it. I hope it is something that you can, if you resonate with, please feel free to use this as a format for you to start your business plans. Uh, it's these fundamental things are necessarily are necessary for every any business. So I don't think you can go wrong by thinking about the things that I've talked to you guys about. And um, and I wish you all the very best. And I'm so excited to see what you guys are going to come up with. And, uh, and really, uh, I love the fact that there's so many of you who are participating in this. And I think there are many more. And uh, maybe hopefully see you in uh, the winners, I think, right, Shruti? I'll see absolutely, the winners. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. And these are shortlist guys in August. I'll on ground face to face. We'll chat. Yes. And then that's we, gonna be fun. We 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 are gonna soon see all of you. I can see the conviction, the perseverance, because see, we are we are left with about 100 plus students. So I can completely see the kids who joined at the first are still here. Angel is here. I can see uh Aditya, Medha, so there are a lot of kids, Ananya is here. Arya is here. So I see a lot of kids who are, you know, who joined a little early and still here. So uh, okay. I hope to see you all in Amritsar while we do the final submissions, while you present in front of the jury. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't tell you how exciting this journey is for all of us who are putting in the entire uh, back-end team and the efforts that we are doing. Thank you so much, Deepti. Thank you so much, Pradeep. And thank you so much, Ashutosh, for making this evening a wonderful learning experience. Thank you to all the young learning entrepreneurs who are here. And I can't tell you how excited I am on being this journey, knowing your ideas. So um, have, a, have a wonderful weekend. See you tomorrow yes, again. Yes. We have a wonderful lineup. Yeah. You are saying something, Ashutosh. Shruti. I just see you do the fun for them to see. Wondering whether this will be fun. You know, I made that little game of uh, maze of careers. Thing. Okay. Uh, I I just forward it to you. Maybe if you want to just put it in the group, people can have a look at that. It's a yeah, fun yeah. thing to see in different. If you're studying music, business, art, or law, or whatever, you know, it's a nice way to look at things. I've sent it to you. You can maybe. Sure. Just, and let people have a look at it. It's a, it's for our view thing. Yeah. Done. I'll I'll upload it uh, while we'll do the learning session tomorrow. I'll upload. Yeah. It. Yeah. All right. Okay. Lovely. Thank lovely. you so much. Have a lovely weekend, okay. lovely evening, and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you. All thank of you. Everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much. See you. Bye bye.